Hello, it's James again from the 11 Plus Tutors in Essex. Um, today I'm going to talk about something which I think is pretty important and potentially a deal breaker in exams. Um, you tend to get straightforward question answer type things initially in the maths paper, but I think the higher level thinking questions uh, can be to do with inverse. So today's video is all about inverse and how it can come up in the exam. What I'm going to show you today, just a couple of examples of how this can come up. Um, so we've got a, a fractions problem here where we've got something times four fifths equals five and three fifths. The first thing I always tell kids to do is if you see mixed numbers, turn it into an improper top heavy fraction first. Then we can see what we're dealing with. So we've actually got question mark times four fifths equals 28 over 5. So we've got something times, so what we're doing here is we're, we're working backwards, but what I say to kids to do is always, this is a cliche, but start with what you've been given, start with what you've got. So what you've got is this to do first. So start with what you've got. When you lay the thing out again, you can see what you're dealing with properly. You will get kids trying to do this without converting this to top heavy. So you must do that initially. Uh, something times, so we know that with multiply, it's, you're just multiplying top and bottom, aren't you? That's all you are doing. So something times five equals five. Well, that's easy, okay? So one times five equals five. Something times four is 28. Well, we know that's seven. So what we've actually got is seven over one is the answer, okay? Now, I, I would urge kids to recognize that seven over one is the same as seven whole ones, okay? So I would say, I wouldn't leave it seven over one, I would say it's seven whole ones, but it's just the question, I think the main strategy here is to try and solve the things that you've been given first, rewrite it out, and then you can see quite, it was easier to see how you could work backwards through this one. So that's just one example of inverse. Next one's a little bit more difficult. So me, we always tell kids, you know, it's the, the total divided by um, the number of items, of data items. But what if you've been given the mean in the question? Well, what we do, if we, the relationship would be that you'd invert, divide, the opposite to divide is multiply, okay? So that's what we're dealing with. So if you've been given the answer to something you've been learnt, you've, you've, you've learnt, which is to divide, if you've been given the opposite, the answer, then you must invert. So instead of divide, you multiply. Then we can start tackling this. So 85 is the mean for these, this series of numbers, 86, 83, 81, and something, the, the dreaded missing number average question, okay? So what we need to do is find out, again, start with what you've got. So let's work out what the total is that we've actually got. So um, the average is 85. You've got four numbers, so four times 85. This is what you've got already, is 340, okay? Um, then you deal with the three numbers. So you add the three numbers together, 86, 83, and 81 that will come to 250, 250. Then all we need to do, so we've got what we should have, what we've got, and then we just find the difference by subtracting. Okay, so we find the difference between those, and we get the answer. So I think inverse is, these types of higher level thinking, it's not easy to teach, okay? And I suppose it's just down to exposure to these types of questions. Um, but I think solve what you can first, that's a big tip, and then rewrite the question out so it, it, it's, in, it's in plain sight for you to see what you've got to do. And then it's just a question of working backwards, doing the opposite. I hope you've enjoyed that quick video. Uh, more tips and tricks for the 11 plus next week. Thank you and goodbye.